This is John Briano, folks, and uh, we're going to give you some footage from the Orange Unified School District meeting from last night, Thursday night, May 25th, 2018. You're going to see a long list of parents approach the podium and address the school board explaining just how horrific and grotesque this curriculum is and how damaging and dangerous it is to our children. And I want you to watch this video in its entirety, folks, because at the end we interview some of the parents that know a lot more about this than even the administrators. This is a must-watch, folks, and this is a must-share. We need to get this information out. People need to know what's being done to their children, and they need to stop it. Once again, we ask you to watch this video in its entirety and share it far and wide and participate in this fight and join these Facebook groups that are mentioned in this video. There's some brave parents here, and I'm really proud of everybody that showed up last night to stand up for our children. Thank you. All right, folks, this is John Briano. We're about to enter the Orange Unified School Board meeting tonight. It's going to be an interesting event, folks. You have my word. Yeah, so this is Orange Unified. We've got some black shirts here. These are obviously uh, education, so these probably the teacher community people. The meeting's about to get underway. Did you say Joe? Uh, the writing's pretty bad. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm Joan Briano. I run the Fullerton Informer website and the YouTube channel. And I want to thank, first of all, uh, Mr. Ledesma for breaking open the attack on free speech here tonight and standing up for people who came out after work <laughs> to show up to speak their mind. And I don't appreciate Alexia trying to play uh, word games with protocol when we've got a room full of people that are upset. You know, we've got a bunch of kids that are at the mercy of a completely corrupt and immoral legislature. And there's a lot you can do as board members. And you could start by saying no to this garbage. I, maybe we should bring Charlie Sheen in here to find out how well those lifestyles have worked out for him. All right? Listen, I'm a, I'm a parent of four children. And the school districts are involved in some really evil stuff right now. And the only thing between our children and this evil stuff are the people that we elect to the board. And so you've got people here tonight saying, hey, protect these kids. You're giving these kids a roadmap to have orgies and get disease and die a miserable early death. That's what's involved with this stuff. This is wickedness. This is not about inclusion. This is not about being happily ever after and walking off into the sunset with a rainbow behind us. This is a brutal, horrific trail of suffering and there are medical professionals that could tell you till the cows come home how messed up a lot of these kids are. And you want to know why these social service units are so busy and these suicide wards are so full? It's because of what these schools are teaching these kids. And they're teaching these kids that they're a bunch of evolutionary accidents and there's no purpose in life and they need to experiment with everything that feels good until it comes back to bite them or kill them. I'm here to tell you something, folks. You need to wake up. The people in the state legislature are not your friends. It's been hijacked by a bunch of radical psychopaths. I cannot believe the stuff in this curriculum. And we're running out of time. We're running out of time to protect our kids. And it's up to you to stand up for them. You want to give some 15-year-old a rim job or have two girls start doing little things to each other that is not normal and find out what happens when men start experiment, boys start experimenting with men and animals because that's where this is all heading. It's a slippery slope and you're giving kids a bunch of toboggans, okay? I'm done talking. I just hope you listen to these parents. And in Jesus' name, open your eyes. Amen. Good evening, Dr. Hansen, esteemed board members. My name is George Roscoe. I was born in Romania under the communist regime of Nicolae Ceausescu. I am a former student of the Orange Unified, the or in, here in Orange County, going to school to Valencia Park Elementary, Parks Junior High, Water Park High School. I am the eighth of 12 children. Our parents moved our entire family here to the United States in 1991. The California Healthy Youth Act has a section called 51932A that says that if gender, gender identity, gender expression somehow pops up in literature, such as history, science, or somewhere else, 
We cannot opt out our children. This is a book I was made to read in AP English in my 12th grade class called Beloved. I stopped at page 13 because it had bestiality scenes in it. I told my teacher I would not read it. She said, you don't have that option. I came home, talked to my dad. We went, talked to the teacher. She finally sent us to the school principal. After long deliberations, they said, okay, we'll give you two options. But in fact, those two options were punishments. Option number one, Paradise Lost, written in the 1600s English, which I'd encourage any one of you to read and to write a book report on it. You won't understand it. Option number two, War and Peace, 1,300 pages almost and counting. You tell me that's not punishment and going to school every single day while all of the other students were talking about and discussing Beloved, I was there singled out and shamed. There is a loophole in our law that shames people. We need to safeguard the literature that is being shown to our kids. I get it. You can opt out out of the general, the, the, the comprehensive sexuality education under Part B, but under Part A, if this stuff happens to be in a book in your English class, you cannot. So I will urge this board. I have two sample resolutions that I'd like to give to Madam Chair. And I urge this board to bring these two resolutions here. One of them is parental rights in education, child education, which ensures all parents receive proper notice about any filthy material showing up in our children's textbooks, wherever they may reside. And number two is removal of harmful and obscene materials from schools. You know what my dad told me? Under a communist regime, none of this filth was ever taught. I encourage you to learn from Romania's mistakes of communism, and even under communism, it was never taught. Don't teach it here. My name is Sherry Gale, and I am a retired school teacher who has spent over 30 years with diverse communities here in California. Even though I was a teacher for many years, I come to you today as a grandmother of four school-aged children who attend schools in Orange Unified. I am concerned about some content in Teen Talk. Orange Unified will be piloting a revised version, yet Irvine Unified is implementing it in its entirety in order to comply with AB 329. On page 86 of Teen Talk, on the section about sexual orientation, it introduces pansexuality. It states pan means any or all. Someone who is pansexual might find themselves attracted to men, women, non-binary people, trans people, gender queer people, and many more. Now we know that the exclamation point denotes excitement, and there is an exclamation point at the end of this quote, and enthusiasm about something. Are we really expecting our children to feel excited about this? And what do the words and many more refer to? Cats, dogs, elephants, perhaps trees. Although Orange Unified has provided an opt-out for this seventh and eighth grade curriculum, there is no opt-out for the gender identity and sexual orientation portion of the ninth grade online APEX um, curriculum. And pansexuality is introduced and celebrated there as well. On page 84 of Teen Talk, it introduces the queer umbrella. They define gender as how someone feels on the inside, and then list a buffet of gender identities to choose from. Apex teaches gender spectrum as well, of which there is no opt out. In the YouTube video from Teen Talk, of which Orange Unified just recently removed due to parent objection, it clearly explains queer umbrella. Here is the text of the video. Being a teen can suck. You are not wrong. Kids don't have a hang-up about gender the way adults do. We all have gender. Or do we? We can be gender fluid, gender queer, gender non-conforming, or no gender. School is a place to learn, 
grow, change, and even experiment. And here's a radical idea that can change everything. Listen to young people. Young people know exactly who they are and what they need. I am also grateful Orange Unified staff took out page 182 of Team Talk. In discussing low-risk ways of contracting HIV, it mentions protected oral sex on anus. I don't think this is something any parent should want their 12-year-old child to visualize. Mm -hmm. Apparently, your review committee agrees. However, why is the top curriculum recommended by the state of California including such information to seventh graders? As parents, we, okay, we need to ask ourselves who is reviewing this content on a state level and can their judgment be trusted? Thank you. Thank you. Greetings, Madam President, Dr. Hansen, members of support. My name is Shelly Wong. I have two teams in Orange Unified School. I have been a PTA um, president at Pomyra and I work in the school district. My kids took the new uh, online Apex uh, health class including gender identity and sexual orientation. I was shocked when I found out this was not an opt-out. However, my kids uh, took this class. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> my kids took this class and does not agree with our family's cultural value. The curriculum teaches only one viewpoint as facts E decode. 51501 states that they should not instruct whether, whether homosexuality or gender is correct or incorrect based on any religious view. However, my kids took the class, this curriculum that many types of sexual orientation and gender are correct. Therefore, any other view is automatically considered incorrect. Why are kids being taught this in school and why are parents being forced to allow this to be taught to their children? I have never even heard of this before. I told my daughter to speak up for what she believes about marriage, sex, and gender. She said she could never do that. I was shocked at her response. I asked her why. She said it would be social suicide. <laughs> the kids would call her names, gush her out, and threaten to hurt her. How is this instruction making school more safe for kids? She is afraid to express her uh, family values at school. This teaching is making her feel ashamed of religion's value. Why is only one point of view being taught and accepted? The law says instructions should not make any student feel excluded. My kids feel very excluded because their views were excluded and never even mentioned in this curriculum. I want my kids to expose to many views, but this does not mean I want their views to be disregarded, trampled, and attacked. I teach my kids to respect everyone. Then why they aren't be respected? Our culture and religions part, is part of our identity. Why should they be ashamed of it? Thank you. and I'm the director of an educational program that supplements school curriculum about Muslims and Islam. We have representatives on the LAUSD Diversity Commission and a diversity board member on a national curriculum organization. We reach hundreds of schools every year, and it's not uncommon that when I send a certified and trained speaker to give a presentation in a classroom about the chapter on Islam, we're, all, we're told that several students' parents have opted out. So I'm happy to hear that you are um, offering an opt-out um, option for this new curriculum about um, gender and identity. Um, the new curriculum also teaches, however, 
one viewpoint as fact on gender identity and sexual relations, automatically implying that other views are incorrect. Um, as the previous speaker stated, that there is an educational code that avoid that instructs to avoid um, instructing students that any specific religious view concerning homosexuality or gender is correct or incorrect. However, teaching one viewpoint as fact on gender identity and sexual relations automatically implies that other views are incorrect. The teachings of this curriculum are offensive to Muslims and violate the core cultural values that we work hard to nurture in our children and families. Islam teaches respect for all people. Respect is displayed through acknowledgement. Yet this curriculum shuns all other views. And students who hold a different view may be labeled derogatorily. This lack of regard for diverse thought is not the democratic America that I know. So I urge Orange Unified to be more inclusive and culturally sensitive of varied perspectives when teaching children of heterogeneous backgrounds that subjects that are an integral part of their intrinsic cultural values. The Muslim community is expecting that Orange Unified is consistent in their policies of all diversity efforts and are not biased. <coughs> Parents should always have the option to opt out of curriculum that opposes their values and beliefs. There are over 120,000 Muslims in Orange County. This election year, we are seeking trustees who will listen, protect our rights as parents, and represent our most sacred values as parents. Thank you. Good evening. I'm here to discuss the curriculum that has misinformed you and will put females at risk for HIV. You see, I'm HIV positive, and so I speak from experience, and I've researched this subject. I teach it in your schools through the Red Cross and the AIDS Service Foundation, now called Radiant. Page 101 of Teen Talk states, anal sex is unlikely to cause pregnancy. Anal sex is being presented in a way as to decrease the likelihood of pregnancy, lower risk. This teaching greatly empowers boys who are pressuring girls to have sex, especially girls who are insecure and low in confidence. Anal sex places girls at the highest risk for HIV. Why is that? The CDC in 2016 at the HIV.gov says being a receptive partner during anal sex is the highest risk sexual activity for getting HIV. Females can only be receptive partners in anal sex, putting them automatically at higher risk for HIV. However, Teen Talk dismisses this fact on page 167. It says vaginal and anal sex are both low risk behaviors for HIV when a condom is used. This is not true. CDC in 2013 says HIV is at least 10 times more easily transmitted via anal and vaginal sex and condoms may be more likely to fail during anal sex. The law states information on the relative risk of infection according to specific behaviors must be included in your curriculum. This curriculum does not state this important fact that puts females at the highest risk. Teen Talk mentions that HIV is not a death sentence that with proper drug therapy you can lead a normal life. That is true, but I ask you what is normal. I've been HIV positive for 22 years. If I miss my daily multiple uh, pill regime, my immune system can be compromised, I can contract AIDS and die. That puts a lot of pressure to make a mis not to make a mistake day in and day out. My monthly copay for my medication is over 2,000 a month for the rest of my life which is currently partly covered by the Ryan White grant. But I take blood tests every three months and I could go on and on with how it's not easy to live with this virus. I don't want other girls to go through this. If I had been properly informed, I would not be standing before you right now with HIV. However, teaching anal sex as a way to reduce the risk of pregnancy with medically inaccurate information is going to increase HIV amongst our young females. Please fix this before it gets into the hands of the vulnerable seventh and eighth graders. adjust your mic so we can hear you because this is being recorded and what Good evening. My name is Linda Sarisa. I am a Hispanic Catholic. 
I have lived in Orange County in under the district for 35 years. I have four grandchildren within the district. I am a, I teach Bible study. I'm also a blogger. And I'm having a problem with all this that's going on with the district. I believe in family and that schools are to partner with parents to nurture them. A paragraph I read on, in Teen Talk on page 8 notifies teachers about minors' reproductive rights that really took me by surprise. This is how it reads. Minors of any age in California may consent to birth control and abortion services. Additionally, parents' permission is not required to excuse a minor during school hours in confidential service. California Family Code 6925. I think that when my grandchildren go into the office, they can't even get an aspirin. Right? They can't. I could not believe what I was reading. Parents' rights are quickly eroding in the states. We have a responsibility to protect the future of our children. Do parents have the right to prevent their children from receiving education in public schools on subjects they disapprove? Almost never. Parents do not have veto power over content of public instruction. If parents choose to place their children in public schools, parental rights are outweighed by the state's interest in educating. Do parents have the right to be notified on off children out of diversity educational programs, which includes discussion of sexual orientation or other controversial topics? No. Parents are not entitled to have notice for, for or the opportunity to opt their children out of such programs. Public schools are supposed to be a place for unity, where everybody feels comfortable, where we work together. I feel that this is also an attack on the social issues because parents that have better economic opportunities send their kids to private school, but medium and lower income people are in the public schools. We have that responsibility. We have a responsibility before God, not only to parents. And in closing, I would like to say one thing. Those to whom much is given, much is expected. That is a scripture from the Bible. And you guys, I pray that you make the right choices and the right decisions for our children's future because they're innocent and they're pure. They need to remain that way as long as possible. Thank you. Two of my kids are attending Canyon this year, and as a parent, I just found out that OUSD has been piloting an online program in health called APEX, which we're very covered, which covers polemic issues such as gender spectrum and sexual orientation. Given this is a new law requiring new subject material for health and sex ed, I would like to ask you, why hasn't there been more intentional communication about the content of the curriculum? We shouldn't have to find this out by the social media or through um, everybody else here. This pilot program is, provides a uh, parent notification slip. However, I wonder how many parents ever see or even read this notice. One of OUSD's core values listed on the website is communicating our shared values, our vision, requires honesty and consistency. Communicating with honesty and consistency includes being sensitive to parents' schedules and language differences. When I asked how I could access these materials, I was told to make an appointment with a DO or a school site to review the curriculum during typical school hours while they were showing me. How is this conducive to most parents' schedules? For a subject as value-driven as humanity and sex, I think full transparency 
of everything that's being taught should be readily accessible and user-friendly to parents and guardians. So let me cross out this part because they, other people have did it nicely. Okay, so to further um, Ed Code 51932B states that parents do not need to be notified when gender identity or sexual orientation lessons are being taught. And there is no excuse. There's a lot of confusion about this, and I would like clarification on this. This is astounding because these lessons can be applied to any grade level and any subject under the guise of anti-bullying and non-discrimination. Who gets to decide this? This is an outright assault to my parental right. And another one of OUSD's core values is to listen empathetically and respectfully to understand the message beyond the words. I implore each one of your uh, trustees to please listen. Listen to us and address the concerns of parents and put tangible policies in, in place that will safeguard our parental and guardian rights. And we will remember who did this and we will vote. You'll have my vote and anybody else who is under my influence um, for the upcoming election. So thank you and 10 seconds left. <laughs> Nancy Mangrich, followed by Eileen Blackowski. Nancy is opting to pass. Okay. So she's okay. Eileen. Thank you um, for your time this evening, and thank you for hearing um, hearing out the public. I live in this district, but I won't send my kids to school here because for the last eight to ten years I've been watching the handwriting on the wall socially and politically and I know that the schools aren't going to agree with my values and I really want to battle that out so I'm educating my kids at home but I have a little one who has special needs and she really would be best served in the public schools but I'm at, a, I'm at a crossroads because of what's going on here. So many people have so much to say so I don't want to take up too much time with them, but I would urge you as a board to consider listening to the people that you represent, the parents that are here and to take into consideration what they have to say and pass a resolution that this doesn't belong here in your district. This can be a sanctuary district. The people here want that, okay? They don't want this here. We don't want this here. I want to send my kids to school here and I want it to be a safe place for them to be educated without being indoctrinated. And that's what's happening. So please, take your position, your responsibility seriously. Feel the weight of all the emotion in this room because it's driven by love for their children and the protection of all the other children whose parents don't speak this English language as their first language or are working three jobs and can't show up to a meeting like this. We care about all those kids. We don't want any of them indoctrinated. Pass a resolution that says this doesn't belong here in this district and instead replace comprehensive sex education with sexual risk avoidance education which will help give our children tools to make better decisions with their families. Can we do something about that background noise that's coming over the speaker? Thank you. It's annoying. Good evening, my dear colleagues, my good friends, Dr. Hansen. Alexia, I appreciate everyone here for what you have to do because what you have to do is great in my view. Um, first, of all, for those who do not know me, uh, my name is Dr. Ken Williams. I'm a uh, board certified primary care physician. I've been practicing here in this community for the past 32 years. I uh, lived in Bill Park for 28 years. All my kids are growing. But I do have an intimate connection here because I'm elected to the Orange County Board of Education uh, from this community that has elected me six times in the last 22 years. I'm so uh, indebted for that. I get to also protect this community as a sworn law enforcement uh, officer with the Orange County Sheriff's Department Reserve Bureau. Um, and I have always and will um, always represent Judeo-Christian standards, parental rights, traditional ethical and moral education principles, and family values. 
I've been a member of this committee. My kids played in the, the Villa Park uh, basketball, uh, Little League baseball, and soccer leagues. Uh, part of what I have to say is that we have an incredible history here in America. Yeah, it's one that, that we can take great pride in. Our founders had a great and unique opportunity to start government anew, drawing from the best knowledge of Western civilization, from Greece and the Roman governments, and of course to the English Constitution and tradition. For the first time in history, as Abraham Lincoln said in the Gettysburg Address, our founding fathers established a country and a government of the people, for the people, and by the people. It's not established by government, um, appointed or non-elected administrators. We as elected uh, individuals have the responsibility uh, to direct the education. I'm concerned uh, because I have heard uh, through uh, colleagues. Uh, by the way, I don't represent anybody from the Orange County Department of Education, nor do I represent my board at all. I'm here as a, strictly as an individual and someone who represents this district and cares very much about it. We've had this issue at our board level for the last two months. We've heard probably a dozen hours of public comment. We've had uh, PowerPoint presentations by administration, and it's not a, an easy issue. I'm concerned uh, because you as a board, you've never voted upon this. In fact, I've learned that you were not even aware of it. I think from a public policy perspective and governance, that is not good, and that's why you have to be on top of this and then make sure that your superintendent knows what is best for the community. So again, um, it's my pleasure to be here. The, the time is running out. Uh, there's a lot of issues that um, you, you've talked about and, and has been discussed briefly by the writers here. This is not state law that's set in concrete. It can be moved. Uh, there are some aspects that I've heard here, uh, the information which is false and misleading. Um, we are going through this too, but take the lead and be strong and say no to this political correctness. school district because we are not going to let this happen to our children. And, um, we created a Facebook group and within weeks we've gotten over 2k members and it's rapidly growing because they are not okay with what's going on and we will continue to make videos about everything that happens here, everything that you expose our children to. So with that, some medically accurate information, they already went over the risk, um, how risky um, anal sex is. Um, some of the things about anal sex from the CDC, it's one third of receptors of anal sex have chronic incontinence or failure of the sphincter muscle. They have diarrhea, cramps, hemorrhoids, prostate damage, ulcers, and fissures that invite many kinds of infection that is very average it is very common recurrence. Is that in the curriculum when they're talking about anal sex? I'd like to know. Um, these statistics have to do with homosexual behavior because they are the ones that normally are doing anal sex. However, you guys are encouraging our children, girls and boys, to do it, whether they are straight or not. So I'm going to just go off of the statistics. 75% of syphilis cases in two, um, 20, um, 2012 were among men who practice sex with other men from the CDC. That 75% represented only 2% of the population. This is astronomically high. So that represents the homosexual community, but you're encouraging this in our children. So imagine how much more of the whole entire population that that's going to happen to. Okay? So take that into consideration. Um, 25 to 40% of them have amebases, most common, which is fecal to mouth rimming that occurs. So, I mean, get that picture when you're little, you know, when your son and daughter are together. Like, obviously not siblings, but who knows that that might be next. Some other, um, with the transgender thing, Dr. Paul R. McHugh, the former psychiatrist-in-chief for John Hopkins Hospital and its current 
distinguished service professors of psychiatry said that transgenderism is a mental disorder that merits treatment, that sex change is biologically impossible, and that people who promote sexual reassignment surgery are collaborating with and promoting mental disorders. He also said, commented to the Wall Street Journal, that transgender surgery is not a solution of people who suffer a disorder of assumption. So if, you're, if you guys are wanting medically accurate information, that whole curriculum is not when it has to do with that. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, Madam President, Dr. Hansen, and board members. Um, my name is Dr. Becky Edinger. I'm a professor of nursing at Santa Ana College. I teach second semester nursing students, future RNs, in the area of obstetrics and pediatrics. And for the past 25 years, I've been deeply studying the sexually transmitted disease epidemic that's flourishing in America, and it's flourishing in Orange County. And so when I was asked to address um, some of this teen talk stuff, I have some quotes from some, from the, some of the chalk pediatricians, but I don't want to say anything that's already been stated. I just want to say this, that as somebody who's been studying this and doing research of my own, one thing that's been identified across the board is our young people do not perceive themselves as being at risk. When I, I ask, I do this semester after semester, I make my students do presentations, I do my own presentations, but I ask them point blank, do you how do you perceive yourself? At risk, low risk, high risk, where? 90% of our young people say they are not at risk. They don't see themselves at risk. Yet, 15 to 24 year olds are in the highest group of people acquiring STDs in our community. So when I see that they are promoting anal sex as a low risk behavior, we know that's not medically accurate. I'm not even gonna go there, it's been addressed already. But it's a, it's a fallacy and it's a wrong thing to be um, teaching kids and just showing, it just, it's wrong, 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 because what we need to do is teach them the consequences. We need to teach them the short term consequences and the long term consequences of STD acquisition. Because if I blurted out the consequences, every one of you would be stunned and shocked at what can happen when you acquire herpes, when you acquire chlamydia, syphilis, gonorrhea, and HPV. It, the, it's horrifying what happens to a person's life. And I'm very grateful to this woman for standing up here and sharing. <laughs> it is not glamorous. It is not a fun lifestyle. I have talked to many recipients of HIV living with it today. It is not okay. And anybody I know that's acquired herpes or any other um, STD, they're not happily living with it. So I just want to say this. We need to think about what we're teaching. They need to know the consequences. People don't know. They come in the office, oh, you have chlamydia. Well, what's that? Well, this happens to be the number one most infectious disease in the United States of America in every county. And Orange County is off the charts, people. You need to know that. We think we're in Orange County, this wonderful place. Our STD numbers are horrifying. I, I, I thought they'd be good until I really started looking at it. So I just want to say this. We need to reevaluate what we're teaching the kids and really look at it. And if you want me to help you, I would love to. I wrote a book about it after my master's work. I'm getting ready to write a second book just to notify people like everybody in this room in layman's terms, this is what's happening and this is what we want to educate our kids with. all the opportunity to be able to come up and express our views so it's, it is very much appreciated and to the board and to Dr. Hansen and everyone else you know thank you for listening to us again um, my concern has to do with um, the entire set of the curriculum pretty much but I really wanted to focus in on a couple of items I've been doing a lot of research I read AB 329 I read all of the sections in the education code that cover that particular area in those statutes. And um, when we talk about the opt-out, this is something that sincerely concerns me. I have already opted out my child from the, uh, the eighth grade sex education that's going to be occurring. And I made a choice for a couple of different reasons. Number one, I'm not happy with the content, but number two, I'm also not happy with the 
organizations that are being utilized to teach the content because I think there's a huge political agenda that a lot of us are missing. Mm -hmm. um, in front of our legislatures, they were able to lobby and make it to where the education is reimbursed to the schools and so the schools are paying the organizations like Planned Parenthood, Teen Talk and others to use their curriculum. And we're assuming that Teen Talk and Planned Parenthood, Apex, and these others are in complete understanding of the education code. And I, I sincerely doubt that they are because I think they're looking at the difference between comprehensive um, curriculum and depth. And I think they're taking this curricul curriculum to a depth that just absolutely does not need to be there. Mm -hmm. And let me just read a couple questions that are in one of the pieces of material that were brought out. And these are questions I wouldn't want my daughter or my son asked, but in 25 words or less, what factors do you think can most influence your gender identity? Another question, who would you be interested in dating? Males only, females only, both males and females? I don't know yet. In 25 words or less, how is sexual orientation different than gender? We're getting to a level of depth that is taking us down in an area that we don't need to be in. We can teach things at a comprehensive level uh, to address different issues that do not get into that, into what, what is being told, whether it's anal sex or STD versus STI now, which is sexually transmitted infection because they want to make it sound lighter and not scare people so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really have an issue. So I also looked at the opt-out, and when I read the opt-out, I went to the ACLU site, and it's saying that you cannot selectively opt-out of the H of the um, the transgender in that whole community. But what you can do is, when you opt-out, you're opting out of everything. And we're being told just opposite that you cannot opt-out of the ninth grade education that's coming up now during the summertime. And I think we need to look at that. The Orange County Department of Education site gave an example. They said the opt-out rule associated with sex education would not apply to social studies lessons on the U.S. Supreme Court's 2015 ruling in favor of same-sex marriage. That is very different than the health education Thanks. stuff that we're talking about. You say Joe? Dude, I uh, writing's pretty bad. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm Joe Briano. I run the Fullerton Informer website and the YouTube channel. And I want to thank, first of all, uh, Mr. Ledesma for breaking open the attack on free speech here tonight and standing up for people who came out after work to show up to speak their mind. And I don't appreciate Alexia trying to play uh, word games with protocol when we got a room full of people that are upset. You know, we've got a bunch of kids that are at the mercy of a completely corrupt and immoral legislature. And there's a lot you can do as board members. And you could start by saying no to this garbage. I, maybe we should bring Charlie Sheen in here to find out how well those lifestyles have worked out for him. All right? Listen, I'm a, I'm a parent of four children. And the school districts are involved in some really evil stuff right now. And the only thing between our children and this evil stuff are the people that we elect to the board. And so you've got people here tonight saying, hey, protect these kids. You're giving these kids a roadmap to have orgies and get disease and die a miserable early death. That's what's involved with this stuff. This is wickedness. This is not about inclusion. This is not about being happily ever after and walking off into the sunset with a rainbow behind us. This is a brutal, horrific trail of suffering, and there are medical professionals that could tell you till the cows come home how messed up a lot of these kids are. And you want to know why these social service units are so busy and these suicide wards are so full? It's because of what these schools are teaching these kids. And they're teaching these kids that they're a bunch of evolutionary accidents and there's no purpose in life, and they need to experiment with everything that feels good until it comes back to bite them or kill them. I'm here to tell you something, folks. You need to wake up. The people in the state legislature are not your friends. It's been hijacked by a bunch of radical psychopaths. I cannot believe the stuff in this curriculum. And we're running out of time. We're running out of time to protect our kids. And it's up to you to stand up for them. 
You want to give some 15-year-old a rim job or have two girls start doing little things to each other that is not normal and find out what happens when men start experiment, boys start experimenting with men and animals because that's where this is all heading. It's a slippery slope and you're giving kids a bunch of toboggans, okay? I'm done talking. I just hope you listen to these parents. And in Jesus' name, open your eyes. Amen. That I can properly um, help assess, that I can properly help um, not diagnose, but guide as a counselor and help with the pros and cons of something. They're not out there. It's very confusing. It's, uh, it's too elaborate. It's not practical. And it really has an attack on core values that different families have. I work with families from all backgrounds, all ethnicities, from the LGBT community to, to you know, people that have depression and anxiety. My own children struggle with some of these issues, like all of us do. And this kind of proposition complicates things mm. for a lot of people. From as young as five-year-olds who have been exposed to another part of our country to, uh, you know, a sex change uh, presentation in the classroom to mom and my Am I a girl? Am I a boy? What am I? Too young in age. Uh, to um, older adults who are struggling with their gender identity who want help. For whatever reason, <coughs> it changes from person to person. Um, openness is important. Dialogue is important. And true transparency in communicating to the parents who are ultimately the ones responsible. I also work with the Hispanic community. And this community is not always well informed. Um, things are not communicated or are misled in the Spanish language. I, I read what the diversity week uh, looked like for the Anaheim School District. It said nothing of what the true meaning was behind it. So parents are left being misled. That's not fair to them. That adds stress to them when they're already stressed enough trying to figure out how to work in this society and how to balance their own morals and their own personal dilemmas. So from a social work perspective, I don't see the social justice here. I think that it's very one-sided, and openness needs to be done to have more research, to look more specifically at how per people are personally being attacked, how personally are being affected in both parts. But the one-sidedness is very permanent here, very pervasive, and it's not fair. And I think that emotionally, <coughs> it's going to have strong effects on the children that are trying to be raised by families. Thank you for your time. Carrie Cox, Lori Dow is on. My name is Dr. Kenny Grayson Cox. I've spoken to the board before, and I'm pleased to be here. Thank you, Dr. Hanson, members of the board. I'm a 45-year uh, experienced public school educator in K through the university level. I appreciate the process that uh, brought people here today, and I think you appreciate the process also. And as I listened, I thought, why is it that we don't all agree? Why is it that we have such diversity of perspectives? And there are a lot of reasons. I think that when emotions get as wrought as they clearly are tonight, we have to ask ourselves a couple of questions. What is it that we're afraid of. And I think there are fears on both sides. What are we afraid of? Are we afraid of facts? Are we concerned that our children will have facts that are not comfortable for us? Is it a value conflict? I think we heard some value conflicts tonight. And I think we need to seek to understand. And surely there must be some things that are non-negotiable. And I hope for this board and for this community, what's non-negotiable is that every student in every school, in every classroom, feels safe, feels accepted, is not ostracized for his or her appearance, expressions of identity, beliefs. And having heard Dr. Hansen's statement earlier, 
and I relate particularly to Ms. Truex because I have that role in two different school districts. <coughs> I think this district has the personnel who can address these concerns <coughs> today and everyone else here. First seeks to understand. Yeah. <laughs> Greetings, Dr. Hansen and members of the board. My name is Laura Nadeau. I moved my home and business back here to Orange 19 years ago. I'm coming to you to challenge one of the quiz questions presented in the curriculum for your middle schoolers on Team Talk, a true-false question given about sexual orientation. It states on page 91, question 10, being gay, lesbian, or bisexual is a choice. And your curriculum says the answer is false. It's not a choice. I'm coming to you as living proof that you cannot say this in black and white statement, especially to formidable youth. I was raised in a religious home, but a very broken home. Due to my parents' violent and ugly divorce, I felt emotionally neglected and very alone. During my high school years, a girl started playing, paying close attention to me and giving me the kind of affection I so yearned for. I was naive to lesbianism. However, this girl, being more sexually sophisticated than me, wooed me in, and eventually we were in a lesbian relationship. It happened to be a girl that filled that empty place in my heart at that time. <clears throat> Looking back now, I can see that if it had been a boy who gave me this type of attention when I was most emotionally vulnerable, I would have probably ended up pregnant and continued on in a heterosexual relationship. Due to this experience as a youth, I self-identified as a lesbian for over 20 years and became very involved in the LGBT community. I was very content as a lesbian and lived a happy little life with my domestic partner. <coughs> However, there was a day when I had a drastic spiritual experience. It was not manipulated by anyone. I'm a strong-willed person, and people cannot easily tell me what I should do or who I should be. It was an experience personal to me, and at that exact moment, everything changed. I realized I did not want to be a lesbian anymore. In other words, I made a choice. I realized this life was not for me. I'm living testimony that the statement in your curriculum is not true. Maybe some people feel it's not a choice, but not all people. So please change the wording of this false black and white statement. The APA research itself does not back up this claim. Your curriculum footnotes the old 2008 APA research saying it's not a choice. But the latest 2016 research from the APA says this to be true. The current scientific revolution in our understanding of human gene genome challenges the very notion of being born gay along with the notion of being born with any complex trait. Now, APA says, our genetic legacy is dynamic, developmental, and environmentally embedded. The APA says the same principles would apply to the notion of being born with the complex traits of transgender, transsexual, or non-conforming identity. Please do not misinform your students. To listen, to listen to us. My name is Sonia Townsend. Um, I've been a nurse for 35 years, and I'm president of California Nurses for Ethical Standards. And I think um, by now you've heard a lot of medical information, the inaccuracies in this curriculum. You've heard uh, life experiences. So mostly I will not be repeating what has been said, but what I want to do, what I do want to um, reinforce is the fact that this is really an assault psychologically <coughs> Um, physically too, because on our children's health uh, and being, um, our children are the most innocent, innocent of all, and it's our responsibility as parents, as, as human beings, to protect them. If we know if something is wrong, and we know it could be detrimental to their health, take away their life, 
why would we not want to protect them? Okay, it's it's so obvious, you know. It, you don't have to be religious. We, we we know what's right or wrong innately. We it is written in our hearts, so we know what's right or wrong. So right now, you have you will have the responsibility to not don't don't implement this curriculum. It's our it's not like our kids. We can be learning so much more academically. Um, we can be growing, and there's so much to life to teach them in relationships, and we don't need this type of education, if you call that education. Because it's not true, and it's not uh, teaching them to think critically, but it's indoctrination. We're actually condoning this just by by putting it out there. We know that everything that's legal is not right, okay? So please, I really ask you sincerely, search your hearts, because you know what, what you should be doing, and, and take have courage. Okay, stand up for those that can't speak for themselves or don't know any better. There's a lot of parents at work. I don't have any children in the school system, but I love kids. I have two granddaughters, and I will always advocate as a nurse and as, as a parent and all. So I want to thank you so very much, and remember that by implementing this curriculum, we're basically embracing promiscuity and all the ramifications to that. Thank you so very much. Good evening, my name is Carrie Edlin and I thank you for this opportunity to speak this evening. I'm a mom of children in Orange Unified School District and my husband is an educator. Every day he works with children who struggle with these types of things in their lives. My question for you all, where is morality? What have we done with morality? It seems to have fallen by the wayside and is no longer taught in our schools or even looked at as a possibility. I grew up with um, in a home and my parents um, taught us abstinence until marriage and that's what I followed and that is what we teach our children in our home. I think the main problem here is that people are looking at that teaching as hate for others and that is not the case. What we need to do if we want to change um, and show a, a care for other people is teach kindness. I don't know what's happened with that. We teach our children to be kind to all people, but that does not mean a promiscuous lifestyle or um, not looking at morality. And I think that that is what we need to do in our district and just overall in all the schools is support an environment that, that shows kindness to other people at the same time uh, teaching morality. And the ways that you can do this is by supporting different programs within the schools. Um, I think the kindergarten program at our school does it great. They have a day where it's a caring day and they all wear shirts and they all get paired up with a friend and they learn about their friend and they share. And I mean, it seems so simple. But now we're our high schoolers. Every day they're stuck on their phones. Every day is how many likes can I get on my Facebook? How many selfies can I take? It's so self-absorbed. Why can't we teach our kids and our community to help other people and serve other people and show that kindness? There were a lot of other things I was going to say, but a lot of other people said it so eloquently, so I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you for your time.
participate has an option to opt out. Can you can you explain the opt out? I mean, I I think from my understanding, the opt out is not for uh, the opt out is only for the. Uh, In, Yes, I can, I can explain it. Okay. In the curriculum for the 7th and 8th grade, because it is part of um, the life science course and is integrated into the anatomy, it's a comprehensive sex ed curriculum, um, they can opt out of the entire, it's five hours in 7th grade and it's five hours in 8th grade. They can opt out of the entire 10 hours in the middle school. Entire 10 hours of uh, uh, sex ed. Yes. Uh, what about the, the gender? Uh, That's piece? part of it. And they can opt out of the entire curriculum. Okay. And I have copies of the opt out. If when you leave today, I believe they're in the back of the room, you can pick up those papers. And all our principals have them in the school site. Any parent who would like to opt out can fill that out. How, how about we advertise this at each of the schools? Each um, principal has sent the letter home, and that's been shared. In addition to that, anyone having questions has come into our curriculum department. They have spent hours with staff. Um, staff has spent hours with parents who have come in and reviewed the curriculum. As of now, I believe I checked with the office. We only have four or five opt-outs, but I don't know if the school sites, um, if, they, if the principals have, been, have given more. But it's available to any seventh grade grade students. Um, personally, uh, my colleagues can decide as they wish. Personally, why, why can't we uh, not implement now this pilot program uh, and over the summer, uh, the board can go through it, uh, uh, more, more uh, parent, parent involvement can be uh, recruitment advertised uh, about this program. It seems to me that there's a lot of controversy here and I know for a fact that there are many school districts that are uh, are not implementing this uh, this soon, or they're they're taking they're taking a step back and and, and having. <laughs> taking a hard look at the curriculum and and um, and, and I think I think uh, you know September October. Have you a good time? Because uh, that that will, like I said, that will give us plenty of time to, to go through the curriculum. Um, I appreciate those that have worked on it so far. Uh, now we have. It sounds like we have something that's uh, that we could uh, a final copy of everything and we can go over. I know we've been getting updates uh, in our board packets, uh, and that's uh, that's good and well. But that that, uh, that serves the board mostly, not not the entire community. And uh, there's a few points that were brought up and and really um, you tell me parents have, have seen this and so on and so forth I would before I would implement I would like to see the numbers of uh, number of parents that have, that have come to see uh, go over the curriculum the number of parents on the west side as compared to the east side compared to the canyons area um, so I so I can get as a board member so I can feel comfortable about okay there's been enough uh, sharing with the community, and the, uh, this community is is uh, uh, going forward with this. You know, the feedback on it is to go forward with this in, uh, this pilot program. Uh, I think I think from what I'm gathering here, we haven't uh, done a real comprehensive sharing with the community. Or at least the parents. Yes. Have thing that a speaker said uh, which kind of resonated with me and I kind of steal the theme here and I'm, I'm, this is all this is just the last thing we said to wrap it up here about being something being non-negotiable um, I, I understand this curriculum and I understand what uh, you know, the politics and all that behind it and what we're trying to do here supposedly uh, so in my my upbringing and as I teach my children uh, what's non-negotiable is, is bullying. Definitely not negotiable. And as a board member, I've always had that kind of attitude and, and uh, perspective. But just as, uh, just as much as bullying is non-negotiable, parents' rights 
is non-negotiable. Why is the superintendent running the meeting? There are protocols and options for a board to do emergency meetings if they feel so uh, compelled to. Um, and uh, June 5th is right around the corner. There's no way that we can uh, we can necessarily, under our protocols, uh, put something on the agenda for our next meeting is June 7th. You know, so we can't we can't dial it back. Okay, so I certainly that's what I was just going to say. At the end of the agenda is um, other business for board and staff. So at that time, at the end of the agenda, you could give direction to staff to take measures as, as you all agree. Okay. But at this point, the public comment session is closed, and we should get into our action items. So if you want to run the meeting, okay. and then it's item 16 is other business board staff conference comments. You can give direction. And you can about this. I think that would be the more appropriate time so we can move forward with our meeting. Okay. okay. Um, I want to get the estimate on time. I mean, the time will be at that time. It will be about, uh, let's see, 30, it'll be like 10 o'clock. Yeah. 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're at the Orange Unified Board meeting tonight. It was quite a night. We kind of surprised these people, the number of people we brought out here against this psycho curriculum. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to introduce somebody to you. Why don't you go and tell us who you are, ma'am, and what about the wonderful things you've got going on. Hello, I'm Becky Rangel, and I got into this when the activist mommy, Elizabeth Johnston, did the Sex Ed Set Out. Uh, I was one of the two people in the whole state of California who did a local Sex Ed Set Out. I did in Orange County, the other person was in Sacramento, and that's how I met Stephanie Yates. Tell me what a spoke. sex ed sit-out is, because I've never heard of one of these The sex ed sit-out is where uh, Elizabeth Johnston had 
all the moms or parents um, yanked their kids out on April 23rd, and it was an unexcused absence. So, so that's hit a them hit them in the pocket day pocket. after the that's daily tennis about. revenue. Okay. They all, that's all they care that's about. That's a so good move. You have a letter that you give to your principal saying why you pulled your kid out, and um, she provided that on her website, sexedsitout.com. And then, uh, so I did it. I had no RSVPs. I didn't know if anybody was gonna show up. I said, I'll stand alone if I have to, but I didn't have to. A lot of moms showed up with their kids. Uh, throughout the day, we had a lot of different uh, people coming and going and that yanked their kids out. And so I met a great group of moms. One of them started a group on Facebook called Informed Parents of California. So it's Literally Informed the day before. Parents of California on yes. Facebook, ladies and gentlemen. And we also started Instagram. That one's a little more new, so it's not as updated. But so the there group. is a Facebook group that yeah. is coordinating uh, the, the, the sit-outs as well as information on other district meetings perhaps? Yeah, so we went to the, the Orange County Board of Education the, the meeting County May Board 9th. Meeting. Yes, okay. so that was for the whole county. You put them a on lot. notice that you're not taking this stuff? Yes, a lot of people, that's when our group spiked too because we, a lot of people found out about it from that and um, since then everyone's just adding their friends and family members and neighbors and uh, so it's growing rapidly and we, we're kind of, there's a lot of different parents and organizations and people concerned about this but they're all kind of fragmented and scattered so it's like an umbrella to try to bring everybody together, strengthen numbers, get everybody informed and so that we can fight back properly. But uh, so, what's the name of that Facebook page? Informed again? Parents of California. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So, Informed Parents of California, and this is a group of moms that is basically saying, "We're not taking this. We're not swallowing this. Done. And we're <laughs> going to stand up for our kids. And we're not going to let these evil politicians of Sacramento legislate insanity into our young, impressionable yes. children." So, tell us, what have you managed to? Uh, accomplished so far with this group how many people have you gotten into it in just one or two days oh I mean within less than a month we surpassed a thousand members okay I think so now you got, we're a, you got a thousand people on your page in a month and that's with no okay folks this yeah. is grassroots at its finest we have a fine young lady here who really cares about children and she's a mother and she's committed and she wants to get the word out and we're gonna help her and we're going to make sure that the people that are making the decisions for our children are going to be number one exposed for who they are if they yes. don't get with the program and number two but most importantly i guess put this before anything is to educate them about what they're actually part of because i think a lot of these people don't know what they're part of is that true yeah a lot of no, these districts of the have no are, idea how bad this stuff is yes they think that it's just a normal sex ed curriculum when we tell them what the new stuff they're implementing they're shocked and stephanie has done an amazing amount of research we've been in contact with pacific justice institute who by the way has opt-out forms on their website for free okay, for every folks, state. That's, that's Brad Dacus' group, yes. so his website's got opt-out forms, yep. so you can download those and print them. Yeah. And then Stephanie right here, she's the one that started the group. She's done an amazing so amount Stephanie, of research. Stephanie, you want to she's, come over here? She's a researcher. And uh, can I get this like fine gentleman as well? Um, George. Your name is George. I really want to thank you for what you said in there, throwing that garbage curriculum on the ground <laughs> where it belongs. Awesome. So let's first start with Stephanie. Go ahead and tell us about uh, who you are and what you got going on, young lady. Well, I'm a mom from the Brea District, Brea Linda District, and um, Pastor Jack from Calvary Chapel, he's my pastor. And he's been talking to us about it for years now. This is Jack Hibbs from Jack Calvary Hibbs, Chapel, yes. Chino Hills. Okay, he's an amazing pastor, and he's been telling us for years about this curriculum. This stuff out. is coming. Yes, and okay. he wanted to show us, but it was so graphic. He said he couldn't even show us at church, and he kept on saying that he wrestled with it, but he knew he couldn't show it. And I'd go and Google it, but I couldn't find anything. And then finally, the activist mommy started releasing stuff. And then the sex ed sit out happened, and I just been trying to share and share. And a lot of parents, I thought either they don't care because I'm sharing on Facebook, or they're not getting the it's they're not getting it in their feed. But I started going to um, the cars in the morning at drop off, and they were not happy with this, and they couldn't believe it. They were still confused. So you're leafleting park cars, or you're hitting people as they're leaving? <laughs> no, I would just go up to the car. <laughs> And talk like wonderful. Yes, and I didn't get that many, but boots on um, the ground. Yes, that's what we need. We need boots on the ground. We need boots uh, at the school, at the drop off, at the pickup. We need them door to door at Walmart, at the grocery store. So you need bodies to get the word out and tell tell everybody how they can get a hold of your group again. Um, our group it, on Facebook is called Informed Parents of California, and our email address is informedparentsofca at gmail.com, and we. We will have flyers with um, contact info. We will have um, to hand out. You guys, you can print them out because obviously we don't have the funds to print everything for everybody. But we'll give them 
the ability to print it and we just need people informing everybody that they possibly can and then we need to build teams in every single school district all up and down California and start fighting this. Just like the homeschool bill where they flood the Capitol and they wouldn't even make a motion on it, they wouldn't call it, right? That's what we need to do here. Yep. These are our babies and we cannot risk. This stuff is not medically accurate. This stuff's toxic and yes. it's really crazy. Yes, it's not So you got them tonight with this outpouring of, uh, of uh, concern, you got them to, to discuss possibly agendizing some action and push this off hopefully uh, the pressure will work yeah. and so we need to keep the pressure on now let's ha let's, let's talk to you sir uh, what's your name again my name is George Roska and I'm a pastor at uh, New Hope in Placentia I'm also a father to three kids um, so you're a Christian pastor? I am a Christian pastor. Saved by the blood of Jesus Amen. Christ? Yes. Amen. And yes. powered by the Holy Spirit? Amen. And protected by all of the above? Yes. <laughs> so that is why you have such wisdom. And so tell us about this book that had bestiality in it that was part of the reading project. So in 2003, when I was in 12th grade um, in my AP English class. What district was this in? This was in the Fullerton Unified School Okay, district. so Fullerton Joint Union High School District. And there was Correct. a guy up on the dice tonight named Ron Lebs who used to work for them. He's the facilities guy. Now he's sitting here. Kind of ironic. So what high school was this at? Buena Park High School. Buena Park High School. And the principal of that high school was? Oh, I'd have to go back to my... Uh... Okay. So we've got a... <laughs> We've got a situation where we have a, a book that was required reading that had bestiality in it. Eight times there is eight locations in the book Beloved by Tori Morrison, a Pulitzer Prize book um, that should never belong in our school system. And in fact, when I went to go and check it out at the Orange Unified, at the Orange Public Library, it was in the adult section. It was not in the youth or teen section where they can, where typically you know, teens are allowed to go and check out books. So when you said, hey, I, I'm not having any part of this, they went and gave you a 1,500 page my, reading assignment. Well, first of all, my, my teacher wouldn't excuse me. So I came to home Who to my dad. Who was your teacher, by the way? Uh, it was Miss Rodriguez. Wonder if she's still there. She taught AP English? AP English. It's, this is a Buena Park feel, High School? She didn't feel like she had the authority. To she didn't feel like she had the authority. Correct, so she sent me to the school principal. The school principal, um, I brought my dad to the principal and he said, well, we have to have a separate meeting on was this. Was he a gentleman? My dad? No, the principal. Was he a, was he, was he a man or a woman? Oh, it was a gentleman. I think. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to think of the same guy that we had on the baseball field. Where kid, my kids might have played with him. So what did he say? What did the principal say to this? Well, it was, a, it was a long meeting where basically, first of all, he said, nobody's ever said this before. We've had this book here. But that's not the point. And that was not the point. My dad was trying to tell him that he spent 38 years in communist Romania where every day he was persecuted for his hey, faith. You said they never had this kind of crap in they Romania. They never had. My, my dad was just livid and outraged to see that we came to a Christian nation and this is what they were teaching kids in a Christian, Judeo-Christian nation. Fullerton Joint Union High School yes. District, and this was Buena Park High School. 15 years ago. 15 years ago. And so this so is I can before, imagine how this has probably evolved into something a heck of a lot worse. This is before the California Healthy Youth Act. And my problem is, is that when they teach this filth in a history class or in a science class, or it can come up in any other class, it's not part of the comprehensive sexuality education, that five-hour course you're taking. So that's there's what no you're opting out. Yeah, there's, there's no, no opt out, out of the, the other ancillary. stuff. Yeah, the ancillary so you have stuff. to go and fight sure for that, yourself. That's exact. I was like, yes, because when I spoke at the last meeting, I didn't get to cover that. And my daughter, same thing, English class. My daughter, she graduated last year, but in English class two years ago, uh, they had to read a book where they're having orgies, they had to take drugs, and they were drinking alcohol. Okay, what school was this at? This was at uh, Pacifica High School in West Garden Grove. Okay, West Garden Grove, Pacifica yeah. High School. This that's the Garden Grove ago. Unified School District. Yeah. And who's the principal of Pacifica High School at the time? Pat, Patterson. Principal Patterson. So yeah. they had a book about orgies? There's like two Pattersons though. There's like a okay. principal and vice principal. So yeah. you went and complained about this and what happened? Well yeah, my daughter came home because she's very involved in our church and uh, is now a youth leader and she came home like, I don't want to read this. This is uncomfortable, especially in the whole classroom with her. And I was like, what? And I guess from what I heard, people from when we were in high school said, yeah, that was required reading. We had, and I said, I don't remember reading that. But anyway, same thing. I talked to the teacher. She said that, no, you can't opt out of it. And so then I said, 
to the hell I won't. And I went to the district board off, uh, office, district office, and they told me to talk to the principal. So I was getting like the runaround. So then I talked to the principal and thank God she was totally understanding and said, I agree with you. We'll give her another assignment. But it's still the fact like, what, I don't know if it was you. Yeah, it was you that talked about how now she has to be ostracized. Oh, yeah. Because she's the only one in that classroom not doing that assignment. And then my son, this year, my son came home. He's a freshman at Pacifica now. He came home one day really upset because it was about uh, suicide. And they had to watch a video, it was all about two gay boys and show them in bed together. The parents. What grade parents, was this in? This is freshman, and this is this year. Just in what school district? Ago. Pacifica? Uh, Pacifica. Garden Grove yes. Unified, folks. The Stanford yeah. office in Garden Grove is the superintendent headquarters. It's that nice big white building just down the street That's from the post office. That's where I had office. to sit out. And so this is, yeah. this is what our tax money is going for. So tell us a little more about what you just said. So he came home, he was upset. He goes, you know, they showed two. Uh, boys in bed together and like the parents caught them in bed together and the whole point of the video was just that these kids because they struggled with their being homosexual or whatever that they struggled with suic uh, suicidal thoughts and, and depression or whatever um, but they didn't give any other other aspects or anyone else that no, they just struggle. put it out there for everybody and the fact that they're even showing them in bed together like the parents caught them in their underwear um, and, it, and then the, the video goes on to show them get married and have a child. Now, was this curriculum? Was this curriculum? Was this an outside sex ed course from that was a, a contractor? Was a health class? It was not. Was sex it put ed. on by a district employee? I, no, it was in the classroom. In the classroom, in the classroom and it was under the auspices of a, of a health suicide. instructor, under the suicide prevention by yes. a teaching a teacher that was credentialed. Yeah, and it's actually um, a. And they didn't even notify video. me. They didn't even. It's a, yeah, it's a popular song. The one that goes, "I don't want to die." Or okay, so they're playing a MTV type music videos. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, that MTV organization is run by Sumner Redstone, and some of the things that Sumner Redstone has on his MTV channel are kids having an orgy in raw sewage. So, you know, this is the kind of stuff that is being brought into the classroom, folks, under the auspices of education. My son just said that they're teaching sex ed right now. He goes, "Hey, mom, just let you know they're doing the sex ed right now. I'll let you know if there's anything appropriate." I was like, "Good job." Well, he he ought to film what's going on in that classroom until they tell him to shut his and, camera and, off. And you know what the worst part about this for us was, you know, you talk about, the, you know, minorities that are here. You know, the Latino community, there's there's a lot of them. They get translated stuff. We came from Romania. We never got any papers home to explain to our parents what opt-out is or that you can't opt out of this literature. So I'm sure there are many other minorities, you know, from Eastern Europe, from, you know, Poland, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, you know, all of these other countries where they don't get stuff like this. They have to just figure it out on their own. Well, they're even messing with the Spanish people. Remember, we just had a video where they showed at a board meeting. Um, they don't translate it properly. They don't translate properly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, was that yeah. yours? That was yours. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, that well, Betsy that Ross. meeting was a Betsy, Betsy Ross. Ross. They weren't yeah. properly translating. Right? No, no, because she was she was a hack. She was either incompetent or intentionally acting as if she were incompetent. Yep. And I haven't made that determination yet, but it certainly seemed to me like she was extremely competent, looking at the credentials she was wearing uh, on her name badge. So, uh, Zonia, would, would you would you like to, to to can I get you to step over here? We have the president. <laughs> I do have somebody. Yeah, else. Bring, yeah, bring them over here, please. We okay. want to get everybody. Uh, Zonia, you're the president of California Nurses for Ethical Standard. Can I have you come over here? Get where the lines a little better, and then we'll talk to Lupe in just a second here. Uh, Ms. Townsend is the president of the California Nurses for Ethical Standard. She's been a registered nurse for 35 years. She is a parent of four children with grandchildren, and she knows her stuff, folks. What we've got here is a health professional. And what do you have to say to the, the, the people that are going to be watching this as they're concerned for their children's minds and health in the public schools? Well, basically, you really you have to watch it like a hawk because the bills that they're trying to push down our children it has nothing to do with education. It's all indoctrination. It's all perversions, you know, and, and, and it's, what's incredible is that they're trying to cover it in an inclusive, healthy. In, in a healthy choice oh, that safe. is all inclusive. And, and, you know, you can be respectful and, and you can, you know, obviously we're to love and be respectful, but all this filth and all this trash has no no business in our school system. I, I agree with you now. You made some points tonight, and did you want to recap some of those points that you made at the, at the podium? Basically, um, we I just told them that they basically know that the medical information was inaccurate, and there were many people, many 
parents and people that actually were giving their life experiences, um, and talking about them and, and the decisions that they regret, and if they knew, they would not have chose, made so, those decisions. So we have we have several people tonight that are medical professionals that were confirming the incorrect medical information in this teen talk curriculum. Correct. That's a major problem. And you know, when you're dealing with an, an agency such as a school district, whose primary goal is to make sure children are educated and graduate and pass standards exams, when they have incorrect information in their curriculum, that really challenges the entire credibility of this apparatus. And it makes people wonder whether this is really all about education or, like you said, indoctrination. It's, it's all about indoctrination. It's totally indoctrination with an agenda. So. And our children are in harm's way. Lupe, would you like to step over here? Because we'd like to hear what you have to say. Hi, I'm Lupe, and I'm a parent here at OUSD. And it, I just want to say that for those parents that are concerned and really want to know what this information is, you need to really get on your behind and call the district and possibly take a long time just to get in, to get an appointment, and see the curriculum for yourself. So the fact that it takes about, well, for me, I'm, I'm a mom. I have different things going on. I have a part-time job. It took me like about maybe two weeks to be able to get in to look at the curriculum. Okay, so what you're telling me is you had to wait in a line to meet with somebody to no, look at this to, stuff? No, I, I had to wait to get an appointment. Why did you have to wait to get an appointment? Why isn't this available online? It's not available online because it is a piloted program. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here tonight at this school district meeting was a uh, bond measure that has been floated by this district where they literally have hundreds of millions of dollars being discussed and Mr. Lebs is up there on the dice tonight going to be talking about that probably right now as we speak but yet they don't have the ability or the technology to put curriculum online for parental preview. That is correct. And we just got this confirmed. That is correct. You have to call Nicole at the school district and go ahead and get an appointment with her and she will sit right next to you while you're scrolling through the online curriculum and there is no way to get Get that link to your uh, okay, I need to stop there. you right there. I don't mean to interrupt you, but what you're telling me is you had to wait to get an appointment to come in and look at something on a computer screen. Correct. So we're not talking about looking at a textbook. We're talking about looking at something on a computer screen. Correct. Now, did they take you to Langley, Virginia CIA headquarters, was it, or was this here? <laughs> it was here at the school. So district. there's no reason why that information shouldn't be readily accessible to the public in the form of a hyperlink. Correct. It's not, but it's not available for parents to be able to have it in the comfort of their own home and be able to do it at the comfort of their own time because we have many working parents. We have parents that don't speak English. They yes. speak other languages. <laughs> and how are these families supposed to have access and be able to understand what their children are going to be, going to be taught? Well, the intent is for that not to take exactly. place. We know that. And so what you're telling me is because it's a pilot program, there's no available online information. That is what our curriculum coordinator here in OUSD told me. And, that, and who is the curriculum is coordinator? Nicole Van Winger. Was she present in the room tonight? She was not. She's probably home with her two-year-old and she's expecting another baby right now. Okay, so she's making about $160,000 a year to tell parents that they can't have access to something that they have a right to have. They have to make an appointment either... And her name is what again? Nicole Van Wager. And she's the assistant superintendent of curriculum? She is the curriculum coordinator at OUSD. Okay, so Orange Unified School District curriculum coordinator. Yes. And she's telling parents that they got to come in and take time make out of their busy day and miss work because these people have, have bankers' to. hours. They said they could also go and, and get a hold of a principal at the school and make an appointment with the principal to be able to go ahead and view the curriculum there. Okay, so we need to find out why this is such a top secret uh, endeavor and that people can't have access to parents. To parents can, that work, let's say they work Monday through Friday during school hours, they have no access to be able to go and look at the curriculum. So. That's, that's totally unacceptable. <laughs> And that reeks of a total cover-up and totally hiding information from parents. Shonda, can you come over here, please? We'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Yes, sir. Awesome. 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 All right, well, Lupe, thank you. That's a really startling development and a major red flag, folks. And as of last week, only five parents were able in the entire district to see the curriculum. And, and that that's exactly the way they want it, ladies and gentlemen. Me, and I was number five. The meeting, there are only five people so far. Okay. And see, and see what, they, what that does is that gives them the, the justification to ram it through because it makes them seem like Nobody cares. Yep. And so that's really what's at work here. Shonda, tell us tell us about uh, what's going on here. At Betsy Ross. Tell us what's going on, period. Well, back 
in 2016, we were notified that this major curriculum was going to be coming through that we weren't going to like. So we had the opportunity at Betsy Ross to have a diversity week with flyers that went home late Friday evening. I got a call from one of my daughter's parents and they said, hey, have you seen this flyer? And I was like, no, I haven't seen it. I went through the flyer and basically it was a flyer advertising diversity week, but it had the slogan Uni unified by pride. So I contacted the teacher via email. By the time Monday came around at about 7.37, she had advised that it was going to be a diversity week with faith training as well as um, gender identity. So we went to the school, and when we went to the school, we met with the principal right, right away, and she said that the event had been placed on hold. The part that was disturbing about it is that it was going to be put on by the LGBT agency in Santa Ana, as well as Western Youth. Okay, stop for just a second. Yes. We're talking about an outside agency coming on campus. Yes. What was it called again? Uh, LGBT Youth Center, which is the out of Santa Ana. LGBT Am. Youth Center out of Santa Ana, folks. I'm familiar with them. They're, a, they're quite a, a radical organization. So they were going to come on campus and do what? Um, a presentation. Oh, so they were going to come on campus and do a presentation. Yes. And this presentation would entail what? They did not tell us. Oh, so it wasn't disclosed. No. That was told to a parent that they were going to have a presentation okay. um, verbally over the phone. And the intent was obviously to expose children to the lifestyles. I, I'm assuming gender identity. Okay, so now... In your, I understand you're very educated. Tell us a little bit about your credentials. Um, well, I have a master's in psychology, and I've been practicing case supervision in home programming with um, At children. Risk children, children with um, special needs, so okay, Down so syndrome, you, you've autism. got a master's in psychology. Yes. And this is how school districts operate because they are masters of psychology, ladies and gentlemen. So let me get this straight. What we had on our hands here was a group that was to be brought in from outside, an independent, possibly a nonprofit. I believe they're a nonprofit. Yes. And they were going to do presentations. Do you know if the people that were going to do these presentations had teaching credentials? We don't know. We, that information was not given to us. We don't know who they were, what their do credentials were. Do we know were. if they were licensed psychologists? We don't know. So we don't know, but yet the green light was given, the week was scheduled, and these people were going to come in carte blanche with no advanced description of what the presentations would entail. Is that correct? Correct, with no permission slips or okay. anything. 